Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to make the Beer Growler Cozy, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. Please follow the link in the description. There you will find both right and left-handed video tutorials, as well as a link to the written pattern and everything else you need to make the Beer Growler Cozy. For this pattern, you'll need Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie. You can use anywhere from one to three colors and probably a few more if you wanted to go ahead and make it a stash buster, but I've used three in mine. You'll also need a USA hook, that's a five millimeter, this one's by Clover, and a button. I recommend a button that's about one and a half inches or 38 millimeters across. You can see the one I used on my Beer Crowler Cozy right here. Now, if you're not familiar with beer growlers, they are essentially big glass jars or jugs that you might find at your local brewery where you can take home some of their brew with you and take it home and enjoy it at home. So I designed this cozy to fit right over the growler to keep the beer inside cold, to protect it from bumping since they are typically glass, and just to spruce it up a little bit and make a great gift. So let's go ahead and work on one together. Okay, first let's take a quick look at the finished cozy. It's made from the bottom up in circles that we just work our way around, and then we work evenly in this great overlapping post stitch pattern. When we get to the top, it splits a little bit, we work back and forth in rows so that we can create this button loop that goes right through the handle. So if I take it off here, you can see there's a button loop, and I send it right under the handle and around the button, and that helps secure the cozy on. It also has a pretty good tapered fit up here, and it's got some good, um, squish some good stretch here so it helps stay on the growler you can see it just slides right off when you're ready to take it off and right back on when you're ready to put it on and you can just put that loop right through there send it over your button and you're all set to take your growler home now if you do change the size of the button you'll need to change the size of the loop a little bit but you can adjust that right on the spot as you're making your own so let's set this aside and let's go ahead and start one all right, so to begin your beer growler cozy, we're going to start with round one right at the bottom. We're going to begin with our first color and a magic circle. If you're not familiar with the magic circle, I do have a separate tutorial for it linked at the link in the description, but I'll go ahead and show you a quick version now. I'm going to take the tail end of my yarn and wrap it around my finger towards me twice. Then holding that tail end down, I'm going to insert my hook, grab that first uh, strand that I wound around my finger, Pull it forward ever so slightly underneath, and then I'm just going to yarn over like so. And this helps lock it all together. From here on out, as I work into the circle, I'm going to make sure to work under both of these strands when I make my stitches so that I can pull this tail to pull the magic circle closed. So from here, I'm going to chain two, which does not count as a stitch. That is just a turning chain. If you're familiar with the chainless starting double crochet, you can substitute that for the chain two and first double crochet of these rounds. After I chain two, I'm going to begin stitching and I'll make 12 double crochets right in the ring. So again, I just make sure to go under both of those loops when I make those stitches. So I'll make the first two here while I keep the magic ring on my finger or the magic circle. Kind of gets called both names. They tend to be used a little bit interchangeably, although they can mean different things here. There we are. And with two stitches made, it's nice and secure. I can go ahead and pull my finger out and I can keep stitching right into that circle and it will stay nicely open while I hold it here. So I'm going to just continue making double crochets right into that ring and I will see you as soon as we all have 12 double crochets made. All right, so I've made my 12 double crochets right in the ring working over both the loop and this tail end. So now I'm ready to go ahead and pull on that tail end right there to close up the ring. Now when I weave in this end, I'm going to use a yarn needle and I'm going to make sure to go ba back and forth in both directions and that will really do a lot to help lock in that magic circle. After that, I can go ahead and join with a slip stitch right to the top of the first double crochet I made to finish round one, like so. Now round two is very similar. We're going to chain two again, which does not count as a stitch. In this round, we're going to work the entire round in the back loop only. Now, if you're not familiar with back loop and front loop, again, I have a separate tutorial, but essentially the front loop is always the loop of the top V that's closest to you, and the back loop is always the loop furthest away. So it's always relative to you, the crocheter. So we're just going to work 
two double crochets in the back loop only of each stitch around. So since we had 12 stitches in the first round, we'll have 24 in the second. Let's make the first couple here together. I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to find that stitch I slip stitch two. That's our first stitch right there. And I just want to go under that back loop. So I'm going to insert my hook between the top two loops of the V there. So I only go under the back one, pull up my loop and make my double crochet. So there's one, and then I'll do the exact same thing right back in that stitch. Much easier to find the second time. There we go. So that's two stitches in that stitch, and I'm going to do the same thing in each stitch around, just continuing to work in the back loop only. So I will see you when we have 24 stitches made for round two. Okay, so at the end of round two, you should have 24 stitches, and you can just slip stitch right to the top of that first double crochet. Now round three, we're going to keep making this base bigger and bigger so that it covers the bottom of our growler. So again, we're going to start with a chain two and work the entire round in the back loop only. This time, we're going to double crochet in the first stitch just once. Again, make sure you just go under that back loop and then we'll work two double crochets in the next stitch. And that is essentially going to be our repeat. One double crochet in the next, two double crochet in the one after that. One double crochet in the next, two double crochets in the one after that. So by the time you have worked your way around round three, you should have a total of 36 double crochets made. And this will help continue our nice flat circle. So I will see you at the end of round three. All right, so at the end of round three, you should have 36 double crochets total. Once again, just slip stitch to the very first double crochet made and you'll be ready for round four. Round four is going to be the last round where we increase our stitches. We're going to move up to 48 stitches by starting again with a chain two and working in the back loop only the entire round. We're going to work two double crochets in the first stitch. So make sure you just go under that back loop. There we are, one and two. And then we'll double crochet in the next two stitches. So one in the next stitch and one in the stitch after that. And that is our repeat that will take us to 48 stitches. So two in the next, and then one, and then one. Two, one, one, two, one, one, all the way around until you get to the end of round four. So I will meet you there, and then we'll be ready to begin the sides of our Beer Growler Cozy. All right, and here we are at the end of round four. At this point, it should measure four and a half inches across. That's measured straight across the diameter. And that will tell you that it'll be about the right size to fit your standard beer growler cozy. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up with my slip stitch here. And then we can begin round five together where we begin the sides. Now for round five, we are simply going to chain two. And this is going to be, I think it's our last round. We work in the back loop only. And we're just going to double crochet in each stitch around. Now by working even, this will start, it'll stop the growing and start working straight up the sides. And while I worked in the back loop only here to add maybe just a little bit more grip on the bottom of our cozy, here we're going to do it to create a really nice line at the bottom of our cozy before we start working up the sides. So just go ahead and work into that back loop only again, but this time just one double crochet in each stitch around. So at this point, we'll be sticking with 48 stitches per round. And I will see you at the end of round five. All right, so at the end of round five, once again, you should have 48 stitches, 48 double crochets. So you can join to the top here of that first one, and you can see because now we're working evenly, we are coming up the sides of our cozy. So round six is very simple. We're just going to chain one and single crochet in each stitch around. You don't have to worry about going under the back loop only. It's just a simple single crochet in each stitch around. So I will see you at the end of round six, where we can begin that fun post stitch pattern. All right, so at the end of round six, we've got a round of 48 single crochets. Round seven, we're going to begin again with a chain two that again does not count as our first stitch. We're going to double crochet right in that first stitch. And then we're going to front post treble crochet in the stitch directly below the next stitch. So to do that, we yarn over twice and then we're going to find our next stitch and then the stitch that it's worked into, the double crochet underneath. That's where we want to work our front post treble. So we go from the front to the back around that post, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, 
yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. So that's our stitch in that stitch essentially. Then we are going to double crochet in the next stitch. So we don't want to work into the top of the stitch that's above the stitch we just worked around. We want to go to the next one. So we go to the next one and work a double crochet. And then we work another front post treble around the next one. Yarn over twice, find the next stitch and the stitch it's worked into. Go around that one, pull up your loop and work off in pairs of two, just as you normally would. And that is our repeat for round seven. Double crochet in the next, front post treble around the next in the row below, right down there. So if you'd like to go back and check your work, like I always do, I always like to go back and just visually I can see. I've got a double crochet there, a post stitch there, double crochet there, post stitch there, double crochet there, and they're all lined up and I'm not accidentally working twice into essentially the same space. So we're going to continue that around. So we're maintaining that stitch count of 48 all the way around for round seven. So I will see you at the end of round seven. All right, so here I am at the end of round seven and I've slip stitched right to that, the top of that first double crochet I made. So you can see we're just working evenly all the way around and we're getting some great texture. Now round eight, very simple. It's just like round six, chain one and single crochet in each stitch around. So it doesn't matter if you're working into a double crochet or a post stitch here, you're just going to go ahead and work under those top two loops in a nice even round all the way around. Now when we get to the end of round eight, we are finally going to be switching to our color B. So if you are making a multicolored one, get ready with your next yarn. When we get to the end, we're going to slip stitch join with that next color. So I'll show you how to get, how to uh, do that rather when we get to the end of round eight. All right, so here I am at the end of round eight and I've made my 48 single crochets. It's time to slip stitch join to that first single crochet. But what I'm going to do here is a little different because what I want to do is to be able to join all my colors and keep using them for stripes without cutting them. At the end of this project, even though I've used three colors, I would like to only have about three ends to weave in, or excuse me, six ends, one for each, two for each color. So I'm going to go ahead and insert my hook in the top of that first stitch, just like I normally would, but rather than yarning over with the color we've been using, I'm going to go ahead and pull up my color B. So I'll just go ahead and pull that over my hook sort of make sure you're leaving a good tail there for weaving in, but put it over your hook and just pull through with that new color. And at this point, it's okay. It can pull up and get a little loose. Just go ahead and separate out those strands here. Take your time and go ahead and tug down a little bit on those two tail ends. This one's of course still attached to the yarn, but for now it's going to hang out on the inside and then our new tail right there just to bring those stitches down nice and tight. And from there we can begin crocheting round nine. This time we're going to start with a chain one and then we're going to front post treble in the stitch directly below this first stitch here. So this can be a little tricky. We wanna stop and look at our stitches. Now remember the last round was single crochet. So when we're talking about the double crochet and front post uh, treble crochet row right below it. Now this time we're going to be working all our front post treble crochets around the double crochets. So we need to make a decision here. If you're doing a chain two and double crochet start, you can decide to go around both of those when you make this stitch, or you can go around just the actual double crochet. Which you do can depend a lot on your gauge and which look you prefer. If you've used a standing stitch here, then you won't even have this issue, but it's something to think about and experiment with and try it both ways and decide for yourself which you prefer. So I'm going to go ahead and yarn over twice, and I'm going to go ahead and try going around both that stitch and the turning chain. Sometimes I feel like it hides it a little bit better that way. So just as before, I'll go front to back and pull up my loop. And if I pull it nice and tight, it kind of pulls those into visually like one stitch. So I like the look of it, but if you prefer to separate them, then that is absolutely what you can do. I always say there's the, you know, there may be the quote unquote right way, but ultimately I think the right way is what gives you the project you like. So if you like to go around both, go ahead and go around both. If you like prefer to go around one, just go around one. After that, it's an awfully similar row to like what we did down here. We're going to double crochet in the next stitch. So again, make sure we're going to that next stitch, not the top of the same one, right there. And then front post treble around the next one. So basically we'll always be front post trebling around the double crochets and then working double crochets into the single crochets above our previous post stitches. 
So that how, that's how you get that overlapping look. So just as before, but of course, sort of the opposite order, the front post before the double crochet. So we are going to continue working our way around here for round nine, as you can see. We're getting that great overlapping look in our post stitches and our double crochets, but we are maintaining our same stitch count. So I will see you when we get to the end of round nine. All right, and here we are at the end of round nine. Now, because this time we started with the post stitch, you should end with a double crochet and join right to the top of that front post treble to finish this round. Round 10, again, remarkably similar. Chain one and single crochet all the way around. And again, when we get to the end of this round, we're going to change colors to our next color. So whether that's color C or you're switching back and forth between two, you can go ahead and get that prepped and I will see you at the end of round 10. Just make a single crochet in each stitch around. All right, so here I am at the end of round 10 and I'm ready to slip stitch join to that first one and add our third color. But one thing I wanted to show you that I like to do at this point, as well as changing to the new color, is when I insert my hook there, I'm going to take the color that I'm not using next that we're just carrying along here, color A. This one is not getting used next, but I want to tuck it in as I carry it along the side so it doesn't hang loose on the inside and get caught as we use our cozy. So I'm just going to lay it right over my hook before I yarn over for that slip stitch. And actually, let me put that back through there. I yarned over with the wrong color. So I'll go ahead and drop that one too. I'm not gonna worry about catching this one just because we've been using it for this round so it's already up nice and high. And actually, then I will yarn over with our new color Believe me, I do this every time when I'm actually doing it at home too. I just have to stop and undo it. Wait, new color time. So we'll yarn over. Again, make sure you leave enough tail. Pull that through like so. And then if I keep this little tail there right in back and make sure you see that blue line hanging right there when I make my chain two to begin round 11, like so, I have trapped that blue one right in there and it looks a little bit like a mess back here, but if I straighten it out, you can see, hopefully, that that's now pulled up along the inside. So I can keep letting it hang on the inside till I'm ready for it, but now it'll be tucked up nicely along the inside of our cozy. So I'll turn this around again here, and now we are ready to begin round 11. You can see I started with a chain two, and I'm going to double crochet right back in that same stitch. And if you like to, at this point, you can go over uh, that color for one stitch, but I wouldn't do any more because you don't want it to move off uh, angle-wise from where you're going to need it when you do pull it back up again. So just go ahead and make that first double crochet, and then I am going to front post treble around the next stitch two rows below. So before, this was just like what we did basically in round seven, and then we did a round of single crochet, and then for round nine we, nine, we flipped them to offset them. So now we're back to the previous way. Double crochet first, then the front post treble around the next one. So just go right down to that double crochet in between. And then double crochet in the next, and front post treble around the next one, two rows below. So that's really it for round 11. It's just like round seven, but of course it's in a different color. So I will see you when we get to the end of round 11. All right, so at the end of round 11, you should end with a front post treble crochet, and then we can slip stitch right to that first double crochet we made. Round 12 is just like all the other rounds that have followed these. We chain one and single crochet in each stitch around. And at the end, we would switch to our new color. And that is essentially our repeat as we work up the sides. Rounds nine through 12, so an overlapping post stitch row, followed by a single crochet row, followed by the post stitch row, you know, that's offset, and then another single crochet row. And you would just change colors after every single crochet row if you want to maintain the same, the same color plan that I did. If you're not changing colors, of course, you just keep going. If you're switching between two, you can do that. You could absolutely, like I say, make this a stash buster and bring in a little extra yarn you had left over from another project for every couple rounds here. And, and just have fun with it. Uh, work your way on up the sides, and after you have made 24 rounds total, then it'll be time to begin the top of our Growler Cozy. So I will see you when we get to that point. All right, so as I say, you repeat those last four rounds, rounds nine through 12, switching colors at the end of every single crochet row, and that will take you up the sides of the Growler Cozy. 
So when you finished those repeats, if you've been following the three color plan I outlined in the written pattern, your last color stripe will be your color C, so what, what I've got here, and then we'll be switching to our color A to finish off the whole rest of it, beginning in row 25. So when you go ahead and make your slip stitch join at the end of round 24, you'll be pulling up most likely, unless again you've come up with your own color pattern, that color A. So that one right there, the very first one we began with, that's the one you want to pull up and you can slip stitch join with. After you've done that, you can pull in your scissors and go ahead and cut the other two colors so they don't keep getting tangled up in your work. You're done with those now. I like to leave at least six inches in situations like this where they're going to be hanging out in there. Even a little more is great. So we'll just go ahead and cut those and then I can set our color B and our color C aside so they don't get tangled up in the rest of our project here. And I'll just go ahead and tuck those ends right on in out of the way like so. Takes a couple extra minutes to sort your ends sometimes, but I find it really does tend to pay off in the end when you're not untangling them. All right, so there we are. Now we can begin row 25. And yes, we are switching from rounds to rows here. We're going to start with a chain one, then we are going to make a pretty unique stitch. It's a front post treble double crochet two together in the stitch directly below and the next stitch. So let me go ahead and make that with you now. So we're going to start by yarning over twice and then we're going to go to the double crochet directly below this stitch right here, just like we've been doing in the previous rounds. We would jump down on there and we can go around that chain again if you want to or just the stitch, totally up to you. We're going to pull up our loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, but stop when you've got two loops remaining on the hook. Then we're going to yarn over once come over to the next stitch and begin our double crochet going right into the top, pull up a loop, pull through two. Now when we've got three loops left on the hook, we go ahead and yarn over and pull through all three to finish the stitch. So that's our front post treble, double crochet, two together. That's a decrease. Now we're going to do that one more time right away here. So we are going to yarn over twice go down here. Remember when we make our front post trebles, we're working around double crochets. So we come all the way over here, pull up our loop, yarn over and pull through twice. So we've got two loops left on the hook, yarn over again, go to the next stitch. We can see it's worked into a treble, so we're in the right spot. Yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then we can yarn over and pull through all three to finish the stitch. Now after this, we're going to go to what would have been our standard pattern before. Yarn over twice, front post treble around the next one, one stitch below of course. Pull up a little bit more yarn here, yarn over once, double crochet around the next one. So this point now we're just going to continue working even. But we, we want to continue doing that until we get all the way around when there are four stitches remaining when we'll be making those decreases again. So I will see you when we have four stitches remaining in round 20, well there were four stitches left of round 24 as we're making row 25. Okay, so continuing with row 25, you can see there are four stitches left here that I haven't worked into or around. We've got a front post, a double crochet, a front post, and a double crochet here. Um, and the single crochet is of course above them. So what I'm going to do now is I need to do two more of those decreases that we began our row with. So I'll yarn over twice, I'm going to find that next double crochet and go around it and work off our loops until there are two loops left on the hook. Then I'll yarn over again, come to that next double crochet, and when there are three loops left on the hook, finish the stitch so that it becomes one. Then I'll yarn over twice again, come to that next double crochet there, and begin that stitch, stop with two loops on the hook, yarn over once, and go into the last one there, right in the top, that single crochet with three loops left on the hook, pull through all three and we have finished the stitch. So with those two decreases at the beginning and two decreases at the end, we've gone down to 44 stitches now in row 25. So for row 26, since we're not joining, we're going to chain one and turn to work our single crochets back across. Just again, one in each stitch as we did before. We're just working from the inside of our growler cozy at this point from the wrong side. So just make a single crochet in each stitch across, which would be 44, and I will see you at the end of row 26.
Okay, so at the end of row 26, you should have 44 single crochets made from the inside of your cozy. And we're ready to go ahead and turn and work back across for row 27, starting with a chain two this time. So now we'll turn and we'll be back on the outside of our cozy. Now we're going to do two more decreases, but remember how our post stitches were offset down here, now we need to offset those. So this time we're going to begin with a double crochet, and that's why we've chained two. We yarn over once, go right to the top of that first stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through those first two loops. With two loops left on the hook, we yarn over twice, and then we can come over here, and this gets a little tricky because it looks like there's two stitches down here, um, but remember these are now counting as one stitch. So we want to come down here and work around this pair here. So remember those were a decrease and pull up that loop and finish off our front post treble here until we've got those three loops left. And then again, yarn over and pull through all three. So let's go ahead and do that again together. I'm going to yarn over, go into the top of the next stitch, pull up my loop and stop with two loops left on the hook there yarn over twice, go around the next one to, you know, in this row below and keep pulling off my work loops here until I've got three loops left, then yarn over and pull through three to finish that one. So now we've got two decreases at the beginning of row 27. And from there we can go and maintain our stitch pattern, double crochet in the next, next rather, front post treble around the one after that, etc. until we have four stitches left of row 27 to make. So I will see you when we get to that point. All right, so I'm almost done with row 27, but I have four stitches left. And if you're having trouble counting your stitches here at the end because of these decreases, just be sure to count those single crochets at the top. Those are a little bit clearer. So we've got two more decreases to make here. And once again, they're going to be double crochet, front post treble crochet, two togethers. So we're going to yarn over and go into the top of that next stitch. Yarn over and pull through two here with two loops left on the hook again. We'll yarn over twice and go around that next stitch and pull that up until we have just those two, or excuse me, three loops remaining to yarn over and finish off. And then we've got the same thing. And remember this time again, we're working into these already decreased ones. So we'll yarn over and just go right into the top of that one there. So that's easy enough. Stop with two loops left on the hook, yarn over twice, and this time we're going to go around, right around both of those legs of that last one. So this will take you right out the end of the row, and that's okay. Just go ahead and wrap your yarn right around it. Yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through three to finish the stitch. And that's it for row 27. With two decreases at the beginning and two decreases at the end, we're down to 40 stitches. So row 28 is gonna be just like row 26. We chain one and turn and single crochet evenly, just one in each stitch all the way across to the end. So we'll have 40 stitches and 40 single crochets in row 28. And I will see you when we get to the end of row 28 when we'll be ready to add our button loop and finishing touches. Okay, so at the end of row 28, you should have 40 single crochets and we're ready to turn and make round 29. We're going to start with a chain two and turn back here to work on the outside of our cozy. We're going to do a repeat of double crochet in the next stitch, in this case, the first one, then double crochet two together after that. So we insert our hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, go to the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, and then yarn over, yarn over and pull through all three to finish the stitch. So just basic double crochet two together. So we'll repeat that, double crochet in the next, double crochet two together in the next one after that until there's one stitch remaining and that one will get a double crochet to cap it off. After that, we'll be making our chain loop and single crocheting across the opening. So I will see you when we get across here, sort of our row portion, our repeats. Don't forget that double crochet at the end you should have a total of 26 stitches before we make that chain loop. So I'll see you when we get to that point. Okay, so we've worked our way across here for round 29. We've got our double crochet, double crochet two together, repeat all the way across, ending with a double crochet in that very last stitch. Now this is where we're going to make the chain loop for our button. If you use the button size recommended, I found that a chain loop of 12 worked really well, but if you use a different button or your gauge is just a little different, you'll definitely want to check and make sure 
that your button loop is the right size for your button. There are so many pretty buttons out there. I don't want to limit you to just using one size or one type. So pick your button and play with your button chain loop a little bit to just make sure it's the right size to fit over the button you've chosen. So let me see where I'm at here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I've got one more. And then I did find that this was big enough for mine. So then I am going to just go ahead and single crochet evenly now across this opening. So these rows here where we went to working in rows rather than rounds, we just want to single crochet evenly across here and then right back up the other side so that we can join to the first stitch we made in this round. Stitch count here doesn't really matter at all. It's just a matter of working evenly and getting the look you like. So wherever you're comfortable putting those stitches, I like to typically work two single crochets into the side of each double crochet row, which is essentially what these are height wise. And then in the single crochet rows, I might pop one more in there like so. But it's just a matter of working evenly across and down and up the other side of this opening to give it a really nice finished edge. Now when you get down to the bottom here, some people like to work a decrease right at the bottom, sort of the valley portion, I guess you'd call it, of the uh, opening. I'm almost there. Let's see, got just a couple more stitches to take looks like here. But that is up to you. I just want to make it together here because there's a couple different ways you can handle it. This would be the point where if you wanted to, you could go in here and pull up a loop and then hop on over here on the other side and almost work it as a decrease here. Pull up a loop there, pull through all three if you wanted to, but you don't have to do that. You can just go ahead, work a single crochet right in there, and then hop on over to this other side and work a single crochet right in there, whichever you prefer. Not that big a difference, but I know we all have a closer eye on our work than just about anybody else, so whichever you prefer is fine. Again, I'm not really worried about specific stitch counts. It's just a matter of working evenly so that you get a really nice finished edge here. So I'm almost all the way up here on our other side. I'll just get a little bit closer to the top there. There you can see when I hold this open, I've got my button loop there and just a really nice finished edge. So what I can do here is go ahead and slip stitch to the top of that first double crochet we made when we began round 29, like so. And then all we have left to do is make round 30 and sew on our button. Round 30, it could not be simpler. We are going to go ahead and chain one and then just single crochet in every stitch and chain around. So just as before, single crochet in each stitch. When you do get all the way around to the chain, I like to work a single crochet here in each individual chain. I just feel it gives a better, more sturdy button loop rather than working into the chain space or into the loop itself, but you can do whatever suits you. And then when I get down here to the bottom, I do like to work a single crochet decrease right here in these bottom two stitches. I didn't necessarily do it this previous round, which I just demonstrated, but on round 30, I did like to work a little decrease right there. I just gave it a little bit uh, cleaner edge, I felt, when making that one. So I'm going to go ahead and continue with round 30 and I'll see you when we get to the end. Okay, I'm almost done with round 30, but I did wanna go ahead and show you right here, I'm at the bottom of that V opening and you can see this is the stitch worked into this side and this is the stitch worked into this side. So that's where I like to go ahead and work that single crochet two together. Just pull up a loop from one, pull up a loop from the next, yarn over and pull through all three to finish that off. Then we can just finish up this whole round by single crocheting evenly again until we get right back to where we began. Now to finish off, I do recommend using the seamless finishing technique where you use a uh, yarn needle and you cut the yarn at this point or maybe after this next stitch here, that'd make a little more sense, there we go. And then you can use the yarn needle to sew that end in or you can use whatever finishing technique you like. If you'd like a closer look at the seamless finish, I do have a separate tutorial for that linked at the link in the description and here on the Moogly YouTube channel. At this point though, I'm going to go ahead and set this one aside. I'll show you real quick here. You can see I've just single crocheted in each of those loops all the way around, but now it's time to pull out our full size version. Okay, here we have our full size to finish Growler Cozy again. Here you can see our we've got our decreases there in round 29 and then our round 30, which made our button loop. Now sewing on the button is generally the last thing you'll do, unless you'd like to leave your weaving in your ends for very last. 
So what you want to do is go ahead and put it on your growler if you've got one so that you can put that loop that you've made through the handle and see exactly where you want your button to be sewn. I just sewed it so it was basically right up against this edge, but it's always a good idea to test it out um, before you, you know, really get it on there permanently. When I'm sewing on a button like this, I'll even take a few loops through it and then just tie a, um, tie a bow rather than weaving in those ends right away so that I can try it out and make sure it's in just the right spot before I do finally weave in all those ends. Otherwise, I've demonstrated all the parts here. We started at the beginning with our circles, then we worked our way up evenly, just changing colors every two rows to get all those great stripes till we got to the top and finished it off with our button. And that's how to make the Beer Growler Cozy, a free pattern on mooglyblog.com using Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie. Please, again, go to the link in the description where you can find all the rest of the details you need to make this really fun pattern. I also want to mention that this pattern is part of the Christmas in July crochet along being hosted by Underground Crafter. Specifically, it's part of the Gifts for Men Week, although I think this makes also a lovely gift for many women I know. But definitely check that out. It's got great gift ideas for men, teens, women great gift ideas that you can get started on right away. You don't have to wait for the holiday season and you can have a more relaxed holiday season when you work ahead. So again, I hope you'll check this out. Thank you so much for watching. If you do have any comments or questions, please do let me know. And don't forget to subscribe to the Moogly YouTube channel. Have a great day, everybody.